How would you feel if the government was collecting all of your medical information to be stored in one database? Well, that's what's happening. And you only have a few months if you want to opt out of the system. It does raise concerns about security, but the government says there are benefits as well. Brad Mackay is here to talk us through this. Good to see you. My health record, how does this work? So far, it's been an opt-in system. Mm. So you'd talk with your general practitioner and decide what information you want to be uploaded there. Um, but what's going to be happening towards the end of the year, so the end of 2018, is that the government's going to make it an opt-out system. So everyone's going to... So you're automatically in unless you say you don't want to be. Exactly. So there's a grace period, an amnesty period, mm -hmm. between the middle of July and the middle of October where you can go online and say that you're not happy to go ahead with this and opt out of the system. But then after that will start to accumulate data um, information on you mm. after that, that period of time. When you talk about the data that's being accumulated, is this all of your health records at each time you make a visit to your GP or any specialist or whatever treatment you, you need, that that will be loaded up and will be stored there? Mm. So if you're seeing your GP, then it's only what we decide to, to put up there and we want right. to be talking with you, the patient, and, uh, and deciding what you're wanting to have on your record. So all of the other notes that we're putting, all of our random thoughts that are part of our general practice uh, brainstorming, that just stays on our computer, on our lo local server. Um, it won't be uploaded into the, the centralised system. But if you're visiting hospital, if you're having an emergency visit, for example, then often that will be recorded. Um, if you're having pathology tests, um, they're planning to have that all in a centralised area. Um, also imaging, so radiology. Um, but people will be able to go with a click of the button and be able to get that information straight away. So for me as a GP, mm. like that's amazing. Um, it means from an economic point of view that I'm not doubling up tests, mm. I'm not giving you more needles if you, if you don't need them, I'm not um, yeah, doing more radiology tests if you've already had those done. So for having information at the tips of my mm. fingers, that's fantastic. Who is it shared with or is it shared with anyone? So each uh, practitioner around Australia will have their own individual code and as we're logging into the system that will be recorded on your health record so you'll be able to see exactly who's um, getting access to your notes. Also if you're going to a GP clinic um, then the clinic themselves will have a, an access code too so you can limit certain providers, you can limit certain um, clinics, or you can say that you only want these people accessing your notes. Wouldn't this information already be with your GP or your local medical centre? And if that's the one you're regularly attending, why do you have to have it stored anywhere else? Why does anyone else have to have access to it? Well, if you're in the UK, you have your one provider that you go to and they, they have all of your records there. But in, in Australia, we have a vast array of different people that you can go and visit. And often people these days, they might have three or four mm. practitioners that this thing for different things. So that communication is really uh, help, helpful for us providing medical care um, to make sure that you're not going to have an interaction with drugs. Um, if we can mm. see which medications you've been getting from the pharmacy, then it helps us to not make mistakes with that too. E immediately, the concern is that this, how secure this information will be, what would happen if there was a data breach, uh, who would that information be seen by, what's the potential for extortion, blackmail, it just goes on and on, doesn't it? Mm. Well, and there are no guarantees they can give that there won't be breaches because there already are breaches of this type of security. It's happening all around the world. So we can get as much comfort as we can from the government saying everything's fine. Um, but when it comes down to it, we really don't know. So there are a number of security measures and everybody who's, who's watching uh, can go to, to MyGov or My Health Record. Um, if you're going to the website, you can then put in your security features. So you can either have it that every, everybody can get access to your notes, any practitioner, or you can put your own code and then you have to actually give your four or eight digit code to your practitioner for them to gain access to your notes. So a lot of people are doing that and I think that's going to be adopted by many people. Um, but yeah, like there, there are also other areas as well. If you're wanting to delete information, um, the information is still going to be kept on the, the system. It will just be hidden um, and that can be hidden for up to 130 years. So even after you're dead, it can still be there for about 30 years after your death, um, still hanging around in cyberspace. There, there, there are questions of privacy, what people want to be known, you know. Um, 
your medical information is yours. Uh, not even potentially, you know, you don't even want your family to necessarily know about these things. Yeah, sexual health clinics, for example, are very confidential. It's very hard for even me as a doctor to mm. get information from a and sexual will that, health will that clinic. that continue to be the case? And that will continue to be the case. There's been a bit of an outcry um, amongst a few physicians being very worried about their patients. They may not want um, other physicians to know about their HIV status. They might not want their, their work to know that they've seen a psychiatrist. Mm. They might not want um, there, there to be a, it logged on, on their pathology that they've had a sexual health check. There's all sorts of different confidentiality issues that are there. And yeah, your people are needing to go online, see what's on their record, mm. and sort of edit their own, their own history and have a bit more control. If you're leaving it, then you don't know what's there and you don't know what other people are reading. There, some of this database already exists. You say there are millions of people who are already on this and they've given their approval to be on this list. Yeah. So, so it already exists to a large degree. So far, we've got nearly 6 million Australians who are already on the system. Um, some were put on in a trial, so about 2 million people were put on in a trial. Um, and the others have been uploaded by their GPs or by the hospital over time. So if they opt out... Does that, where does that information go? Is all that information erased? Um, that or information is separated, kept on yeah. the on the government uh, panel. Um, even if you opt out, even if you opt out, that will still be sitting there in uh, in in space, um, not doing anything, um, but can still be accessed um, by by hackers but or from the government or from law enforcement agencies but as well. If you opt out before October this year, the same applies. So if you don't already have a record, yeah. and if you're opting out, then they won't start to accumulate a record for you over that period of time. But as of next year, everyone will be on it. Uh, that's the assumption. And you have to actively opt out of it. But that information up to that point will that stay. Will still be kept. So what's the argument? I mean, you, you mentioned there some of the, the, the medical arguments and you can access inf information and so on. But, you know, the, it, when we see what happens with Facebook, when we see the concern about info information is used and, um, and traded, what can the gov what 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 are the benefits here for the government to say to people look you should you should do this apart from the benefit that you have as being able to access information but for me what do I get out of this? Mm. So if you've got a chronic health condition and you're on multiple medications and you have a car accident and you're unconscious, mm. then there's the opportunity for the hospital to, to go into your records. And if they're, they're unable to get access to it, if you've got a code that's locked down, there's also an option where that's called break glass. Mm -hmm. So they're able to gain access to it in an emergency situation. So when that break glass happens, all of the, the bells and whistles go off, um, often that that provider will be called um, within even a few minutes um, from the government to ask why they're breaking that glass, why that's going going underway. So there's a lot of um, a lot of fines that are involved if people are doing that um, without a reason for for gaining that access. So that's really handy if you're unconscious. Mm. Um, from the other point of view as well, from a data point of view, there are a lot of organisations and companies that are actually interested in this data as well. If they're able to uh, see what people are being prescribed, what people are getting from the pharmacy, mm. what conditions people have, there's a way of actually looking at this this for the, the benefit of, of Australians all, all around the country. And we just assume these days that nothing's private anyway, don't we? I mean, well, we almost live in that age right the, now. The older generation <laughs> and older physicians are a little bit worried about yeah. confidentiality, but a, a lot of the younger generation coming through, they're not too worried. Their whole yeah. life has been on Instagram um, since they've been born. They put it there. Yeah. <laughs> All so, right. Good to see you, mate. Thanks. <laughs>